Hi, my name is Cassie, and I'm typically the one behind the camera. However, this time, I wanted to do a little experiment that I thought Sparkfun would be perfect for. See, I'm the only one in my family who lives in Colorado, and during the holiday season, in order to spread that holiday cheer, I have to ship all of their gifts via the mail. And there's one thing I always worry about. It's when I send them out and they look like this, and then when they arrive, they look something like this. Now delivery services are complicated, especially during their busiest time of year in the holiday season. These packages get moved around a lot, via hands, trucks, planes, through sorting facilities, and occasionally they can go from looking pretty to looking like they fell off the truck maybe a couple times. But what I want to know is just how beat up do these get, and I want clear data. But I'm no engineer, however I do work with a lot of really talented people here at SparkFun that I figured could help me make a little experiment. So I have Mariah here, who built us a prototype. What is in it? So this is our prototype for the package tracker. So in here we've got our 10 amp hour battery pack, and that will power our SparkFun breadboard with quick capabilities. Attached to the breadboard, we've got this open log, which will log all of our data onto this little SD card back here. And then on that is our quick micro accelerometer. It has six axes that we're, we're logging. Over here on this solderable breadboard, we have attached our four FSRs, which are force sensitive resistors. So those will be able to tell us how much pressure the box is under and uh, all of that kind of stuff. And why is there a duct tape portion here? So fun fact about this battery pack, it has a 60 milliamp minimum current draw. So if anything's pulling under that, it will shut off after, after a little bit, go into standby. Under this box is a super bright blue LED. The only reason we added that was to bump up our circuit uh, above that, that threshold because without the LED, we were running about 35 milliamps. Okay. And now we're at about 80. Sweet, and so we just pack it up and send it off? Yeah, so we've got some of this ESD safe bubble wrap so it doesn't mess with any of our electronics. So we can just shove all this in here and we'll pack it kind of around our FSRs. So, you know, forces equal and opposite. So we need something to push against so that we can actually get recordings from those. Sweet, let's send them off. Sweet. We built three identical boxes to be sent out to the same location, but through three different delivery companies. And these three companies already offer tracking. So now we get to find out just how handled they get. Yeah, that might have been a bit of a hyperbole. But we sent all three boxes to our design manager, Blake, who works remotely in Idaho. Sent all on the same day with the cheapest delivery option available. Now we wait until they're delivered and check in with Blake to see how they showed up a couple states away. Well, all right, Blake, you received all three boxes. What did, uh, how did they show up? Uh, they all showed up looking really good. Nothing was like squished. All the corners were nice and nice and sharp on all the boxes and everything. Um, the the interesting things that we found out were that let's call it the uh, the blue box and the brown box um, both had a dead battery, so everything was still hooked up in each of them. We got plenty of data off of both of those, so we're looking to chart that and look at all the you know the, the accelerometer data and things like that. But the orange box was really interesting. The the battery to the Arduino was unhooked. The quick connector to the IMU was unhooked, and the quick connector to the uh, open log was unhooked. So if you look at 
what the boxes actually look like inside of here. I got my stupid filter on, but we got the Arduino here, a little IMU there on top of the battery, we got all the circuitry going on there, and then the, uh, the open log over here. So there was three things that were disconnected inside of the box. Huh. That's pretty so that's weird. But... But it'd be hard to imagine these things unplugging themselves um, in, any, in any sort of like, I mean, throwing the box around even, especially like the quick connectors and stuff like that. So very interesting there. All right, Mariah, what is, uh, what is Blake to do next in this process? Yeah, so um, now I think we'll just, there's a micro USB cable in the box and you can use that to, to charge the batteries back up before you send them out. And then uh, the SD card that's in the open log, you can slot that into a computer, pull the files off of it, send them my way. Um, and then you can either delete them or leave them on the SD card. It's got enough memory to make it back. Um, but yeah, then it should be good to go after that. Sweet. Cool. So then uh, once those are all set, then uh, make sure that you plug everything right before you send it out so that it has maybe that battery can make it this time. We'll see yeah. if, if it'll uh, it'll make Because it's a, it's a couple days, right? Like how many days was it until you received these? Um, I think it was like two to three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, sweet. Yeah. I'm excited to see when they show up if we're going to get some new data and to see if those are unplugged again because that was pretty weird. But yeah. <laughs> it is pretty weird to uh, send batteries through the mail in general. So I knew that was a uh, something we had to kind of look out for, but we'll see what kind of what kind of data we get because hopefully we'll have two sets for going there and back. So. All right, Mariah, we got three boxes sent to Blake, and now we have three boxes back from Blake. Do we have any data from our, its journey to Blake? Yes, we do. So, on the journey to Blake, we know that our orange box was disconnected, and we can actually see that right, right here. <laughs> no more data from orange, but we did manage to get a good bit from blue and from brown. Okay, so we have data for on the way there. How about on the way back, did everything show up okay? Uh, so actually this time, instead of orange being disconnected, we had brown disconnected, um, which we again can see in the data here of our, our brown spikes kind of just disappearing and no longer there. We got plenty from orange and plenty from blue this time around. Okay, so orange was disconnected on the way to Blake, but then brown was disconnected on the way back from Blake, but then we have blue across the board is fine. Solid throughout. Okay, and how was brown when it arrived? So I'm, I'm kind of glad that on the way out to Blake, that orange was disconnected because we were able to get data on the way back. Sure. The way brown came back to us, we wouldn't be able to get data from this anymore. Um, so the way that they sort of tried to take it apart seems like just a handful of wires, a big old yank up. Yes. Um, we ended up actually, the quick connector was removed from the red board from the force of, of trying to pull on it, as well as the uh, the data pins had, had upended themselves. Yikes. Okay, yeah. so not the nicest way of right. taking it apart, but I mean, that is the kind of the sketchy thing about sending batteries to the mail, you yeah. never know. But uh, we did get data, it's nice that it was one and the other, so orange on the way there, yeah. brown on the way back. Mm -hmm. So we did get at least some data from both. What can we get from this data? So here we can actually see the difference between just the sheer number of data that we got from, from blue compared to orange and brown, which had been disconnected at some point. So right. you see this. Blue was doubled. Right, exactly. So you see this is reaching up to 35,000 readings of force, whereas, you know, orange and brown are 12 and 16,000. Sure. What's interesting is that blue seems pretty consistent, even though it has the, like a ton more readings than the other two. It's kind of like, uh, you know, at most, maybe like 110 grams. Um, a little bit more of a spread on orange and brown, way out of there. <laughs> Around 1200 grams was sort of our max for brown, um, which is about two and a half pounds. So not a ton of force it's by any means. Crazy, yeah. Right. But it is interesting that brown should be disconnected and still have this this big range. That's kind of, I think, the most interesting por portion of, of this data. Sure. Yeah. And what can we do to improve this? I mean, because this was our first iteration of trying to even just try this out. Right. What yeah. What do we want to do to make, I mean, I want to do this again. I want to get new data. It was kind of interesting how both you know, came there and back. So what do you, what do you want to do to make it better? I definitely think timestamps 
probably the most important thing, especially with our accelerometer data. We just kind of need to know when these things are happen happening sequentially okay. um, in order for it to be really meaningful for us to, to analyze. I also think GPS would be really rad to do. <laughs> yeah, and it, hell, we have a lot of GPS so many, right now, yeah. so I mean, that'd be pretty easy to incorporate in this project, I think. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, I can't wait to you know do this again, see what we can do to see how these, uh, these boxes turn out. Until then, um, We'll see what do you guys think we should do when we send them back out to Blake and maybe we should send them somewhere else. I don't know. We'll get some more data. I'm excited for it. But until then, happy hacking. We have Mariah here that who, wow, can't say anything. Cool. <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, everything's at sparkfun.com and we'll see you. Oh my God, that was awful. <laughs> Here are the true stars of the show. <laughs>